McCain linked to Russian oligarch in Mueller's probe. Before special counselor Mueller hinges his investigation on emails Paul Manafort sent to Russian oligarch Oleg Tapaska, a billionaire aluminum magnate, he should investigate former Senate Majority Leader Bob Dole's ties to Tapaska in 2005, after Dole lost his presidential bid to Bill Clinton in 1996, and Senator John McCain's ties to Tapaska in 2006, when McCain was preparing to run for president. Tapaska, often cited as one of Russia's most wealthy billionaires, established his political credentials by marrying the granddaughter of Russia's late President Boris Yeltsin in 2001, about a year after Russian President Putin signed a decree granting legal immunity to Yeltsin's family. A staunch supporter of Putin, Tapaska built his fortune as an aluminum magnate, using the immunity and power he derived from marrying Yeltsin's granddaughter to leverage Moscow's organized crime mafia into supporting business deals favorable to Moscow both in Russia and in Eastern European countries that were part of the former Soviet Union. The complexity of understanding Russian and Ukrainian politics will make Mueller's case against Manafort beyond the capability of any judge or jury to sort out fully especially if Mueller intends to hang Manafort over his relationship with Depaska. Dole's Ties to Depaska On April 17, 2007, The Wall Street Journal reported Russian businessmen who made fortunes in the wide-open 1990s amid the Soviet Union's disintegration were hiring Washington insiders to persuade investors and regulators they are committed to good corporate governance. The Wall Street Journal noted that in 2005, DePasco hired Bob Dole's consulting firm for a $560,000 fee to help DePasco to obtain a visa to visit the United States, ignoring charges from DePasco's rivals that DePasco had been trying to bribe U.S. officials to obtain the coveted visa. Dole had nearly chosen McCain as his running mate in 1996, and Dole's lobbying partner at the time was McCain aide Bruce Jackson. On May 11, 2007, Reuters reported the backstory to the Depaska visa controversy, noting the U.S. government in July that year had revoked Depaska's 2005 multi-entry visa, possibly because of concerns that Depaska had ties to organized crime in Russia. Depaska being barred from the United States cost him billions of dollars as the U.S. cancellation of his entry visa occurred just as Depaska and his fellow shareholders in aluminum company Russ Al were seeking to go public launching an initial public offering, IPO, in London that would have generated up to $10 billion for Depaska and his fellow shareholders. As long as Depaska was barred from entering the United States, the London IPO was on hold, as U.S.-based institutional investors could never take a position in a company believed tied to Russian organized crime figures in the background. Depaska's chief business partner in London was Nathaniel. McCain's Ties to Depaska On January 25, 2008, Jeffrey Birnbaum and John Solomon reported in the Washington Post that Rick Davis, then-Senator John McCain's campaign manager, helped arrange two meetings between McCain and Depaska in 2006 when McCain was overseas on official congressional trips. When the first meeting was arranged, in January 2006, Davis was a partner with Manafort and Davis Manafort then a Washington-based lobbying firm that was being paid to provide political advice to pro-Russian and oligarch-funded candidates in Ukraine, according to the Washington Post report. Davis was McCain's campaign manager for both his serious presidential runs, in 2000 and again in 2008. Birnbaum and Solomon also noted that at the time of the meeting with Depaska, McCain was publicly supporting Viktor Yasenko in Ukraine a pro-Western reformer who led the 2004 Orange Revolution and was poisoned by dioxin during the campaign. In 2004, Manafort and Davis worked for Yusenko's opponent, Viktor Yanukovych, who was backed by Putin, and his party of regents. The Washington Post described the January 2006 meeting between McCain and Depaska as follows. The first gathering that brought McCain and Depaska together occurred in January 2006, when McCain was part of a congressional delegation trip. He and a small group of senators, including Saxby Chambliss, Republican Georgia, and John E. Sununu, RNH, met for a drink near Davos, Switzerland, at an apartment where they were greeted by Davis and Depaska.
The group then went to a dinner at the ski chalet of Peter Monk, founder of Barrett Gold, the world's largest gold mining company, based in Toronto. Participants at the buffet dinner said Monk complimented his sometime business partner De Pasca during his brief remarks to the 40 or so guests. The Washington Post noted the second meeting took place even months later, in August 2006. Davis attended a social gathering attended by McCain and De Pasca in Montenegro, another Eastern European country Davis and Manafort were representing at that time. Birnbaum and Solomon noted Davis was a paid consultant to the governing party in Montenegro. Following the dinner, a group from the dinner took boats out to a nearby yacht in the Adriatic Sea, where champagne and pastry were served, celebrating McCain's 70th birthday though neither McCain nor Davis subsequently recalled De Pasca being on the yacht for the birthday celebration. The yacht party was hosted by Italian con man Raffaello Falieri and his movie star girlfriend Anne Hathaway, at the time when Falieri, represented by Doug Ban's Tenio consulting firm had committed a $1 million contribution to the Clinton Foundation. In 2008, Fallery was convicted of defrauding investors of up to $6 million by posing as an agent of the Vatican. Fallery pled guilty to 14 counts of conspiracy, money laundering, and fraud, and served almost five years in a Pennsylvania prison before he was deported back to Italy. Moscow on the Mediterranean Reporting on the McCain meeting with de Pasca in Montenegro in August 2006 the nation noted that Davis and Manafort had obtained a several million dollar contract to help run Montenegro's independence referendum campaign in 2006. McCain also supported Montenegro independence, endorsing what the nation described as a simplistic notion of independence from a country America had been at war with, in the late 1990s was all that mattered. The nation noted that Putin and the Kremlin were agreeable noting that Russia had generally sided with Serbia against the West during the Balkans wars of the 1990s, but for the Kremlin, cutting Montenegro free from Serbia meant dealing with a Montenegro that could be more easily controlled. The nation observed that the Kremlin had nicknamed Montenegro as Moscow by the Mediterranean, largely because Russian oligarchs, including Depaska, control huge chunks of the country's industry and prized coastline and Russian exert a powerful influence over the country's political culture. The nation commented that Russia's virtual takeover of Montenegro was well underway in January 2006, when Rick Davis introduced the Pasca to McCain at a villa in Davos.